What? You got no place to go? Well, still gotta pack anyway. Welcome to the Global Passport Crew, your YouTube budget travel channel to international destinations. Today we're going to talk about pre-stocking your luggage for when you travel. Now, I'm using a concept that we had when I was in the Army. And in the Army, they issue you a whole bunch of pieces of equipment. One of them is a rucksack. And that rucksack, they're going to give you a whole bunch of other equipment to put in your rucksack and keep it as basically a, a go bag, so to speak. So when you're ready to go on your mission and stuff like that, your rucksack and your other bags have all the equipment you need to get ready to go on your mission. <clears throat> so we're going to apply those concepts to this, uh, you traveling. And basically, we're going to take your luggage and we're going to pre-stock it. Now, with that being said, it's going to work for certain luggage bags, okay? So if you have what uh, a knapsack or a, reg a travel knapsack, it's going to work best for that. If you have one of the smaller carry-on luggage cases, it'll work a little bit for that, but not totally for certain items. But if you're going to have checked baggage, it's not going to work. Okay, maybe with a couple of the items I'm going to mention, and I'll let you know which items it's going to mention for. Um, for certain things, it's not going to work for, but generally I travel with a travel knapsack. So this will totally work for that, for those quick travelers and stuff like that. Like me, if I'm going to go to someplace like Costa Rica, I'm going to carry my travel knapsack. I'm not going to carry... Uh, a carry-on case or anything like that. But you'll see when I get through it that I'll mention where a lot of this stuff is going to work. So sit back, buckle up, and let's rock. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to break this down. We're going to break it down first with identification. Now there's two pieces of identification you should keep in your luggage. The first one is going to be your passport. Um, passport Obviously, if you're going to foreign destinations, you're definitely going to need that. So you always know it's going to be in your luggage. Um, basically, if you're carrying a travel knapsack, um, and always travel with a travel knapsack because basically I can put clothes, um, my computer, stuff like that. Um, I did that when I went to Jordan. Um, so I always like to carry a travel knapsack just in case I can separate from my luggage for some reason. I have clothes I can change into. So I always have a travel knapsack with me. So my passport will be in that travel knapsack. The second one I'll, identification I'll have is a international driver's license. Uh, you can get one from AAA, which is the American Automobile Association. Those are the guys who you call when your vehicle breaks down. Go on their website, download the application. The fee is about twenty dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Also, you have to send in a copy of your driver's license, and they will issue you an international driver's license. Those two items I keep in my traveler's backpack um, for when I travel, um, just in case if I get an issue overseas, because on that international driver's license is translated into about twenty different languages. So those are two vital pieces of documentation I'll have in my backpack. Okay, the next one will be uh, any vaccination shots that I've taken. I will have medical documentation for that. Obviously, after this pandemic, some places are a little bit eerie, especially with airlines, because airlines um, still are wearing, some airlines still require you to wear masks. Um, I'll also have a mask in your luggage case, but also medical documentation stating that you are vaccinated um, to fly on that airline or to go to, into that country. 
you never know when they'll reinstitute those mandates. So having that documentation with you in your uh, immediate travel bag that you can get access to, have it there. Also, I will also have any vaccination that is required to, for me to enter that country. I know in certain countries like in Africa, you need a malaria shot or entering the Philippines or some requirements you may have to get this shot. Um, you have to check the Department, U.S. Department of State website to figure out if you need to have a required shot to enter that country. But when you get those shots, get a hard copy of that. Also, also make a Xerox copy, save that to a digital file. Um, I'm going to tell you what to do with these digital files later on. So that way you can also cover yourself just in case you can lose your hard copy. Okay, the next thing is going to be your itinerary. You are going to make a hard copy of your itinerary. That's going to be your flight, your hotel, and even the car. Now, once you get all those documents set up in the hard copy, you're going to immediately put it in your traveler's knapsack. Your knapsack I keep bragging about so much, and I'm going to get into the end of the video why I talk about this traveler's knapsack being so golden to me. You're going to put it in there, and you're also going to make a digital copy of that. You're going to put it in two places. One, you're going to email all those copies to yourself. You're going to put it in a file in your email. The second place you're going to put it in a pass protected USB. And I'm going to explain why you're going to have that. It's also going to be one of the tools you're going to have. I'm going to explain why, because that's going to be very, very important. Okay? Next, we're going to create a list. This is going to be an emergency list, just in case if anything happens, you go to this list. You're going to have a hard copy and a digital copy. This list will consist of the following. Um, it's going to be the list of phone numbers to the local embassy in the city, in the country that you're going to be going to. You're also going to have the uh, hotel that you're going to be staying at, their number, the airline you're going to be flying on, your bank, not banks in that city, but your bank, uh, your credit cards, their lost and found number, and the travel insurance, their number, just in case if you get any issues with your luggage or medical insurance. Those are important numbers you need to have readily available. You're going to make a list of that with their phone numbers and any other pertinent information you need to identify yourself, like policy numbers or anything like that. You're going to make a list of that. And... Um, you're going to take that, make a hard copy and a digital copy, and you're going to put that hard copy with your, um, in your traveler's knapsack. Um, the digital copy we'll get into, like I said, later on with the other stuff. Uh, this is going to be important, uh, just in case something happens. You have some place you can, like, okay, what do we, we can get to that stuff and do what we got to do to rectify whatever situation you are in. Okay. You're going to get something what we call in the military a burner phone. A burner phone is just basically a cheap phone. Um, it can be a very old model Android or iPhone um, that you paid maybe 100, 200 bucks for. It can be just an older flip phone, whatever. Whatever you use to communicate with or what have you. Um, me, I'm just going to get an older model iPhone for 200 or something bucks, get a SIM card, use that to do my filming videos and what have you, and just transfer it over to my computer if I do any blogging and stuff like that because, you know, it's compatible with my computer, it's compatible with, you know, my phone or what have you. That way, um, if I get robbed of it, no harm, no foul, no big deal. Um, I still got my iPhone, which I'm going to keep locked in the safe in my hotel room. Because in certain countries, these iPhones, they're going to be about like four, month, four months of salary to somebody. So if you want to protect yourself, just get yourself a burner phone. 
it's not going to be that much of a major loss or even a major loss at all. Plus, you know, you'll still go home to iPhone or Android, whatever phone you use. So be sure you have a burner phone in your luggage. And all you have to do is when you get to the airport, just get a SIM card and you're good. Okay, these are accessories you should have in your travel bag. Um, notepad, just in case you got stuff to write on. Pens, the right way, because you're going to be filling out custom declarations whether you bring something in or not. Uh, cables, because uh, some people forget to bring when they get in the cab and like, oh, I forgot to bring my charging cable for my phone. Keep extra cables in your uh, travel bag. Um, I usually have a set of cables for hooking up my phone to the computer, phone to the charger, all that other stuff. Keep an extra set of those cables in a plastic bag in your travel knapsack. Um, USB ports, multiple USB ports, so you can hook it up to your uh, computer. Um, a universal travel adapter so when you go foreign because they don't work on the same outlet just like the United States definitely gonna need that a water bottle definitely gonna need a water bottle and a they sell portable foldable knapsacks um, actually you can put that in your luggage um, keep that in there and I'm gonna talk about that in the next segment so that way you can uh, understand what you can keep in your bigger luggage because we're going to get into that next um, what else also um, toiletry keep your toiletry in your travel bag because sometimes when you're on a long flight might want to break out the deodorant, a small little mouthwash, you know, just to keep yourself a little fresh. Just saying. And that's it. Okay, underwears and socks always in my luggage. I keep a separate set, separate from my one I use daily. Um, I just take these out just to wash them, so get the dust out of them. But they're constantly dedicated to my luggage because that's one less item I have to worry about them um, they're always in um, these luggage cubes so they're easy to transfer amongst the different luggage bags um, going so that's one thing I don't have to worry about just got to get the different types of clothing I'm gonna wear so that's one less headache I have to worry about so um, I highly recommend putting them in uh, luggage cubes. You can get them on Amazon um, and just wash them uh, every couple of months and you will have no headaches. And they're perfectly and perfectly they're great if you're going to um, keep them in your travel uh, bag because you just may have to stop over somewhere. If you get separated from your luggage when you're in the airport because sometimes you lose your luggage if you have your underwears in your travel bag, obviously changing your underwear is just gonna change them. You've got fresh you always got a fresh pair of underwears with you, so it's gonna be good. Um I've been talking about this traveler's backpack. Um I'm in the process of getting a new one. This one will have an external USB charging port, uh, but it will be charging off a power pack, which will be internally inside the bag so it will connect off to a power pack so I that's one thing you guys should have is a power pack whether you have this type of a bag or not because power pack you can charge your phone up uh, sometimes you're not going to have that luxury when you're in the airport because everybody's using up the power outlets and stuff so instead of you know worrying about trying to get your phone charged because everybody's on their phone you can just pull up a your own power pack and charge your own phone. No biggie. You even have one that's solar, so you can just stand by the window, let the sun charge it, that type of thing. I'll generally have two of those in my pack, in my backpack. Also, 
I have this little device. This is from Glocomy. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video, by the way. This is a, a Wi-Fi modem. Um, so I can get on the Wi-Fi. Sometimes you go to places where the Wi-Fi is not that great or the Wi-Fi is down and you may be doing something on the computer you need to continue. I'll jump on this. Um, I'll get X amount of gigabytes off of this. So I'll link onto this and do what I have to do. It's pretty much my backup when, I, when I'm going in overseas or my primary if I decide to use that. Um, it's an ideal method to use um, just to have in my backpack. Uh, more of a luxury than anything, not a requirement, but uh, it just works well for me if I need to use it. So just another little tidbit of stuff you can use um, for your tool, uh, for your backpack if you just need it. Okay, now the digital files. This is what you're going to do. You're going to make, you're going to take the hard copies and you're going to make digital copies out of them. Or if you already have digital copies of them, that's cool. You are going to take the following hard copies. The passport picture of, your, of you. The international driver's license. And your medical documentation. You are going to take and the emergency contact list. The hard copies of those. You are going to take that along with the everything and you're going to fold that up nice and neat. Long, lengthwise. You can fold it once, but you're going to have it lengthwise. Put that to the side. Now, after you have taken all that stuff and you've digitized it, you're going to take it, you're going to email it to yourself and put it in a file on your email server so it's protected. And you're also going to put it on a password protected USB. Okay. Follow along because we're not done yet. That USB will not go in your bag. This instruction is specifically for guys. Now pay attention, guys. You are going to buy a belt, a men's belt. And ladies, if they have this belt for you and you wear pants, you buy this belt as well. You're going to buy this specific belt that has an internal zipper with a secret compartment in it. You're going to take those documents that I told you to fold, you're going to take that USB, and hopefully it's not bulky or big, it's small enough that you can put it in that with a, inside of a small, thin plastic bag, along with a little bit of cash in there, and put it in there, in that little small compartment. Nice and neat, put it in there. And zip it up. If you can't put it, you can't get the plastic bag in there, just put it in that small compartment and just zip it up. That's what you're gonna do. Let me tell you why. Thieves are not gonna think about taking the belt. They're gonna go in your wallet, they're gonna go in your pockets, and that's it. They're not thinking about your belt. Now, if you don't want to put the cash in there, fine, but put the documents and the USB in there, at least. So that way, those important things are protected. Don't put it in your bag. Put it in there. Or, what you can also do is just digitize everything. Don't make any hard copies of any of anything. Just have a thumb drive. But put the thumb drive in that in that belt with the hidden compartment. Because everybody wears a belt. 
Okay. That I recommend you guys to learn. This was all I will also mention about this belt in my next video on keeping yourself safe overseas. Okay? And that's what you're gonna do with those documents. Another episode in the books. I'm glad you guys were here. Thank you for joining us. And if you like the episode, please hit the like button. Also, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Great to have you part of this family. Until next time, everyone. Happy travels.